It is impossible psychologically. It's just too complicated. And what you find is that effective executives shrink their area of focus so that they can truly focus. So they're between a shotgun and a rifle. And then they put all of their energy, all of their time, into solving the specific requirements of the things they have decided matter. She asked me the last big point. You've now focused down. You've said, here's what matters to me. You're now rewriting your schedule to fit what you've said matters to you. You've brought around you strong people with strong personalities, which means they all are with great strengths. Not necessarily strong, but great strengths. They may not be strong personalities. I mean, you may have a computer person with no personality, but boy, are they great at keeping your whole information system up. Or an accountant who's not exactly the life of the party, but boy, do they keep you out of trouble with the IRS. Then you have one more thing. Now that you've focused, now that you're thinking about it, effective executives make effective decisions that establish systemic change. Now let me tell you what that means. Every time you run into a problem, the first thing you do is you say, to, first you stop, right? If there's a problem. And what do you do when there's a problem? Look at it, and you listen, and you learn. The, the, then before you start to solve it, you say to yourself, aha, is this a symptom of a deeper problem? Automatically, never, ever, ever, I mean, unless it's something goofy like, you know, we need to put a postage stamp on it or something. But if it's, anything which if it's anything which requires you to stop for a meeting that's complicated enough that it's worth listening to for a meeting, then don't solve it until you've asked the question, is there a deeper problem? And the reason is simple. If there's a deeper problem, when you solve this one, guess what's going to happen? It's going to resurface. And then when you solve this one, it's going to resurface. But the effective executive, and this is the essence of Sloan and Marshall, and it took me five years to figure this out in the mid-70s. The essence of it is you automatically stop and you say, if the, remember, this is the reverse of vision, strategies, projects, and tactics. This problem is a tactic. So now let me see, am I going back up to a project level, or am I going back up to a strategies level, or am I going back up to the vision level? What's wrong? Why did this happen? What's going wrong in our system? Did we have the wrong strategy? Do we need to rethink it? Do we design the project wrong? Or is there a flaw in our vision of what we're doing? Because then it's worth your taking the time. You see, it's going to take you one hour to solve this, one hour to solve this, one hour to solve this, and you still aren't there. But if you will stop, figure out what this is and get rid of it. None of these will come back. And you'll be a stronger institution or a stronger person or a stronger organization. Sort of like I learned when I woke up after having, after having been out drinking all night that I had a hangover. That may mean take lots of aspirin or it may mean think about something deeper here. Or I'd really like to exercise a lot except I never go out and get sweaty. I'm using silly examples, but I'm trying to drive home a deep point here. If you will get in the habit, when you run into a problem, of asking if there's an underlying class of problems that this is a symptom of, and then thinking through the systemic changes you need to solve this problem, what you'll find happening pretty rapidly is you're really moving. Now notice what you've done now. You've created a system where you focus outside to decide what you're going to do. You then focus, narrow down to the things that really matter. So you're really focusing your energy intelligently. You then control your time. So you're able to be focused on the things that really matter. You then recruit strength. So you have strong people helping you solve your problems. And you then always make systemic corrections rather than just solve the tactical problem. When you, do, when you find yourself doing those five things as an automatic rhythm of your life, then you will find, A, that you are amazingly effective. When Drucker was right, I mean, he got this. He absolutely understood how to do this and put it together right. And I mean, he's still in his, in his I think, late 80s writing 
but this book is a work of genius. And my point is, you take those five ideas, you don't have to have a penny. You don't have to have a master's in business. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to own a business. You know, you can, you can get up in the morning as a poor person, take those five key habits, and by the end of the day, you're better than you were when you started. And if you did that every day for a month, you'd be a lot better than you were at the beginning of the month. So every American can learn these five principles. They can learn the five habits. And if, every, and if we say to them, that's our expectation. You're an American. Why aren't you being affected? Notice how different that is from the psychology of victimization. And by the way, notice I'm not controlling anybody. We're saying, why don't you be effective at the game you want to play, pursuing the life you want to do, so you can have happiness on your terms? Because you're an American. You're free. But to be free, you have to have personal strength. And if you're going to have personal strength in the information age, you ought to learn to be an effective executive. Because that gives you the tools to be personally effective. Now just take that model and compare it with what we're used to seeing. Next week's topic is Pillar 4, the spirit of invention and discovery, and the development of pragmatism and practical common sense. And next week's reading is Democracy in America, Volume 2, the first book, chapters 9 and 10.